I've always been fascinated with this world of virtual reality and it's something that I haven't really like totally delved into but recently there's been so much buzz going on with Oculus Rift launching the Q1 and I was like whoa what is that and what is going on and that inspired me to have this episode for the WAC where today we're going to talk about virtual reality. The origins of the concept of virtual reality, well it dates back almost to guess what, like the 1930s. This French author writes a very simple play, the theatre and its double. And that's really where that concept originated from and boy has it exploded. This fascinating concept of virtual reality, well, it's something that's always existed in sci-fi novels, in films, in research papers, and of course in other spaces around us. But today, it is going to be something with the launch of the Oculus Rift One, it's going to be something that will exist in your living room, in the palms of your hands. Oh my God, it sounds so exciting. Of course, for $600, it'll be in the palms of your hand. But that brings us to the big question on the whack. How real is virtual reality and what kind of effect will it have in your day-to-day -day life? Virtual reality today exists at many levels. So if you had to look at like the basic level one, then that would probably just be like your computer screen, a flat two-dimensional projection. Next level, which is slightly more interactive, like your video games, how could we forget that? And then there's VR3, for example, a flight simulator. There's lots of changes that happen in the place and the space where the individual is, but there's absolutely no manipulation to the individual senses. VR4. Basically, it's cyberspace. You find yourself transplanted into this electronically created world. It's an environment which is not controlled and there's a use of a lot of equipment which allows you to alter your reality. And then there's the big mama, VR5. Who needs psychedelic drugs when you've got this kind of reality? In this kind of virtual reality, the lines slowly start getting blurred and everything that you are experiencing, for all intents and purposes, starts feeling real. Imaginary examples of the VR5 was something that we had seen in Paprika. Remember the anime that I had recommended a while back? But real life examples of us going into this virtual reality world at a level 5 is something that I will also talk about a little later in this video. So while having a world that is completely designed according to your likes, your dislikes and your tastes would be one of like the biggest pros of virtual reality, in a more practical and a more real world, one thing that was really striking for me is this app that you can get on the Oculus Rift. Basically, it trains you on how to be a really good public speaker. A lot of you keep writing to me on the WAC and asking me, how can you stand in front of a bunch of people and talk? Well, maybe this would be something that would help you. Because it puts you in this simulated environment where you're actually standing in front of an audience and every time you say too many ums or you start talking too fast or too slow, the app will prompt you. And in a more practical use, already in clinics, they're using virtual reality to help soldiers recover from PTSD. A headset is used to transport the soldier back into that same traumatic experience that he had during war. And they believe that reliving that experience again and again and again starts making it familiar rather than having that sense of fear. It's apparently known to help a lot of soldiers recover from that traumatic stress disorder. Sounds a little scary to me, but then, heck, I've never been to war. Today, they're also exploring the possibility of using virtual reality to try and recreate a crime scene, something that allows forensic researchers to take the jury through the actual crime as it took place. And for all those dental students out there, virtual reality is here to your rescue because you can also practice on a virtual patient. One of the biggest cons of virtual reality would have to be the kind of effect and the stresses that it causes to our brain. But one of the biggest impacts of virtual reality would definitely be the implications that it can have on your social life. Someone who's involved in this virtual world 24-7 can slowly start believing that his virtual friends are his real friends and he doesn't really need real people for company anymore. That same example can also be extended to virtual porn stars, one of the biggest booming industries today. This kind of virtual reality is being taken five steps further, where not only do you feel like you're having sex, but you also pair it with a sex toy. So you legitimately feel like you're experiencing an orgasm at that moment. Customize the person that you want to have sex with. 
Boobs are too big, you can make them smaller. You don't want Scarlett Johansson, you can get Megan Fox. And all you ladies out there, Johnny Depp, he's always available. Now that would be a pretty weird fucked up place where there's this awkward man-woman relationship. I mean, how does that really work? I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. A virtual world against a real world. What do you think about all this that's happening around us? If you like this video, then tell the world about it. Share it with your friends. Like, comment and subscribe. And if you've just joined us, welcome to the tribe. I'll catch you again soon. Ciao! Sometimes what we see and what we know are just interpretations of reality, an illusion. And with that, ladies, you have exhausted 18 of your questions. You now have only three to go. Think with your heart and not with your brain. Think with your brain and not with your heart. I mean, that's like an age-old argument, but I think I'm more like of a brain person. Time flies faster as you get older. This also depends on three major things. Your age, of course, the kind of year that you had. Was it a good year, a bad year, a rocking one, medium, 